Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to do a tutorial for you on how to do the Chapter 3 homework for Palant the, in the SPSS Survival Manual. Um, I'm going to start out by opening up the data file. This will be your first homework where you're actually working with SPSS. Hopefully you've been able to get your VPN access or to arrange to work in one of the labs on campus to do your SPSS homework. Um, I am obviously I'm at home, so I am working through the VPN um, that I have set up on my computer. All right, so I've got my I've got my homework sheet here. I've also got my textbook next to me. Um, what I'm going to do is basically just go through all the steps that I'm asking you to go through on uh, your chapter three homework. So first, I'm going to open the survey.save file in SPSS. Depending on your computer um, and whether you're in a lab or on your own uh, machine, it will take either more or less time for SPSS to open. Um, be, be patient uh, because sometimes it can be a bit slow. What you'll see when you open the file is a pretty standard SPSS data file. Um, across the top, if you follow my cursor, are the variable names. Across the, the side uh, are subject IDs um, and the number of the subject in the file. So the first column here, for example, is the randomly assigned participant ID number. Um, this left hand column is just in order how much that you've got in the file. Across the top, as I said, are the variables um, as they're, uh, they're entered in columns. So for instance, subject two here, whose ID number is 307, um, their data runs across the row. Columns represent all of the participants indications their answers to each of those individual questions. Now down here at the bottom you have two tabs. One is data view, one is variable view. The data view is obviously where the data is actually entered. So what, what's represented on data view is all of the raw data and any computed variables that you create. You can you can scroll all the way over, you can see you know the very last variable um, in the file and uh, then back to the beginning. Variable view is a, your, your author palette talks about a code book. The variable view is one way of thinking about that code book. Um, it's not in printable form like a code book would be, but here you have um, this time in each row represents each variable. Uh, that is that the the data file is built out of. So you've got the ID number, sex, age, marital status, and so on. Um, and then you've got your individual scales and the individual items making up the scales um, listed down below. Some other key things that you're going to learn how to use. Um, you can label every variable with a longer um, name for the variable. Sometimes, uh, especially in um, survey research, you have the actual survey question will show up over here under label. Then under values, um, you, these are the options because you have to numerically code things such as sex is going to be coded. Um, and this is what we mean by a code book. You're going to have one represents males, two represents females in this particular uh, instrument. Or for marital status, you have uh, one representing single, two re representing being in a steady relationship, and so on. Um, so the, the variable view is where you would go in order to look at um, the way in which each particular variable might be coded. Now, Palant has not gone through and coded, uh, given you the coding for all of your quantitative variables. Um, when I'm doing my own 
data files, I typically have the codes for every single um, item. Um, but in this case, Pound has not done that. Now, another thing that you will learn to do uh, with your data, with your variable view rather, is you will be labeling the type of variable that you have. So some variables are nominal, meaning they're by name, they're qualitative, such as sex, which is, you know, you have an arbitrary distinction between male and female, um, that's a nominal variable. In contrast to something like age, which is coded as a numerical qual quantitative variable, that's something in SPSS we call a scale variable. And then you have um, other kinds of variables called ordinal variables, meaning they're in a specific order uh, from low to high. And that is how Pound has um, categorized the variable highest level of education. So it goes from low to high in a very specific order. So that's categorized as an ordinal variable. Now, in my um, other tutorials, I may toggle back and forth between variable and data view. In the case of this homework, you're, you're primarily going to be dealing just with the data view. Um, and sometimes Palette refers to this as the data editor. Um, I will typically just use what's on my screen. I call it a data view. So don't be confused by that. So um, the first task that you're being asked to do um, in your homework is to go to the data view, which I'm already in, um, then go to the bottom of the file all the way down. So the quick way to do this is to grab this scroll bar over here on the right, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the file to the last case, and I ask you to indicate what is the subject ID number of the last case in the file. So in this case, we can identify that that's the last case in the file. Then I ask you how many cases, meaning how many participants, make up the entire data set. That's where you look at this number over here. Now the next part of your homework asks you to um, explore some menus in SPSS. And even though you know SPSS is is a is an incredibly useful tool for us as we do research. There are some quirky, weird aspects of it. Like all pieces of software, it has its weirdnesses. So I ask you in the homework to click on graphs. So you're going to go up here across this menu bar. You'll go to graphs and click on that. And instead of going to some of the other options like Chart Builder, which frankly I find seriously annoying, um, and some of the other options there. I go to Legacy Dialogues, um, and Palant uh, actually recommends this as well. And I ask you, just so you become familiar, to identify the first three types of graphs that are available to you under that Legacy Dialogues box. And what I mean by that is over here, what are the first three of those? The next thing I want you to, to do is to um, you know, continue exploring what your options are here in SPSS, and I've asked you to go to Analyze and to click on that, and then go to Descriptive Statistics. Um, when, when we present data and get started doing data analysis, the first step is typically to um, do Descriptive Statistics so that we can describe our sample. Uh, what are their demographic characteristics, and then describe the basic demographics, or not demographics, sorry, the basic descriptive statistics for the variables themselves, such as measures of central tendency or measures of variability. So under Analyze, we click on Descriptive Statistics, and I ask you to identify what are the first four options um, that you see. Uh, in that box. So what I mean by is in this box. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> um, so you've got frequencies, descriptive, explore, and cross tabs. So the next step um, is to 
practice using dialog and sub dialog boxes by clicking on analyze and then descriptives again. So I'm going to go to analyze, descriptives. This time I'm going to select frequencies. Now what this opens up, and you can, I sometimes find it's useful to stretch this box by, by dragging it open, and why I like to do that is so that I can see more of the variable names as they're, they're presented. Sometimes they can be quite long, um, not so much in this particular data set, but you'll notice if, if, you, if you hover over the name, so like this variable says, do you have children currently living in the home? in the bracket is the short variable name that shows up in the variable view um, and that may be helpful for, for you as you interpret output. So the, the next thing I ask you to do, you've selected frequencies and it's opened up the dialog box and it, I've asked you to highlight the following variables and move them into the variables box um, and I've asked you to select sex and I click the arrow and move it over. Marital status. And I move it over. And source of stress. And I move it over. And then I click OK. Now what happens after you click OK is an output editor opens up. So this is a summary of what you have just asked SPSS to do. Now notice if I minimize this page, make it a bit smaller, my data file is still right back here. So it, it's opened a new frame for you to look at. And sometimes the first time you use SPSS, that can be confusing. That you've clicked OK and suddenly this new screen has popped up and I don't know what it is. This, this is your output. So you've told, by clicking Analyze, you've told SPSS to run a series of operations for you. The file, the, the screen that opens up, that's the output file. So this will give you the answers to the questions um, in Part C. I've asked you what percentage of the sample indicated being female, what percentage of the sample indicated being single, what percentage of the sample indicated that money and finances was the main source of their stress. Um, so that, that data is in these tables. Now I've asked you, um, when you generate an output file for your homework, I want you to save it and then be able to put it in a Dropbox for me. So how you do that, if you click on File, you click you then click Save As. Now the dialog box that you get for this is irritating to say the least. You do need to pick a place where you're going to save the document. Um, if you're working in a lab computer, you're going to have to make sure that you don't save it somewhere that you can't find it again. If you're on one of the virtual desktop computers in some of the labs, for example, anything you work on will vanish the minute you lock off that computer. So you have to tell it where you want it to go. Um, one of the ways that I do that, like right now, output one is a fine name, but I need to know where it's going to save it. So I'm going to have to keep clicking for it to go up a level until I reach the, the place where I want it to go. So this is actually my OneDrive space. You may want to put it on your H drive, or if you're working on your laptop, stick it on your desktop of your computer before you upload it to some other location. You know, for me, the place where I save documents is in my OneDrive space. So I've chosen, I'm going to put it in here. Maybe I want to create a new folder um, that's called Homework. And I've asked you to give it a name. Um, so I change the name. 
chapter 3. And it's going to give it, as you can see down here, it's going to give it a .spv. Um, that's what um, output files are designated as. So I've given it a name, Chapter 3, as I instructed you in your homework. And then uh, I click Save. And it is now saved. How do you know it's saved? The little thing that looks like a floppy disk, which we haven't used since before you were born, it's no longer blue. Every new thing you add, it's going to turn that that old floppy disk image it's going to turn it blue and that then that means that you need to save new information from your your file now once you're done once you're completely done you can close that since you had saved it's not going to send up a warning and say you haven't saved your stuff um, then you can you haven't made any changes to your data file um, so it's not indicating that you need to save. It's going to, it will ask you uh, this irritating question. Do you really want to close SPSS? And you can say, yes, I seriously do really want to close SPSS. So that's your walkthrough uh, on your, your first homework actually using SPSS. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, just shoot me a message and let me know.